Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents with me, your host, Valerie, and sometime co-host, Miss Purrington. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. You can keep up with us on Twitter and Instagram at Comedy Wham or on our Comedy Wham Facebook page. In addition to podcasts, Comedy Wham brings you articles, album reviews, our advice column, Rochelle Takes on Comedy, and we've also got a festivals page and our FPIA 2022 page where you can keep up with all of the contest results. This is very narrow casting to Austin audiences. And of course, we're known for our events page for live shows in Austin, Houston, and DFW. If you're a comic in those cities and want your show featured on the calendar, go to the events page and click Submit a Show to complete the short survey. Tag us on your Instagram stories and we'll share your show promo. Looking for ways to support all these resources that we provide? You can donate to Comedy Wham on PayPal, Venmo, or even Patreon. Search for Comedy Wham on Patreon and check out our subscriber perks. Now let's get back to our podcast. Launched in 2016, the podcast project brings you funny people and their stories. As a fan, I like to delve into a comic's background and motivations, and we usually take a detour along the way. Consider the interview a way for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. If you like this podcast, please rate and review us. That would be so amazing if we could have some reviews. Uh, We are six years running, and we have uh, one review, so hook us up. All right, let's get back to this. Let's go to our introduction. Today, uh, I'm bringing back a guest. We first had him on in 2017. That's like baby comedy wham. Um, He's got a really fun origin story, which you can hear on that episode. He's been on the South by Southwest Comedy and Moon Tower Comedy Festivals. He came to Austin by way of Nebraska, then to L.A., and now he's back in Austin. He is, this is going to give it away, he's the star of County, which is available on YouTube. He's the co-host of Men on Film podcast. His debut album, I Can't Die, was released in 2019 on Stand Up Records, and I was there for the live taping at the Velveeta Room. It was an incredible uh, recording. Uh, He was one of my favorite recurring comics on our Comedy Wham! Isolation comedy shows in 2020. He is one of the greatest absurdists that I've ever met. Uh, He is an 80-year-old man. He's been divorced at least 14 times that TMZ knows of, and his noodle neck uh, has earned him. He's the newest coach of the New York Yankees. Uh, And now Comedy Wham! presents our returning guest, Ryan County. (laughs) Applause. There is a well, there is a thing probably for applause on that. Uh, probably. There we go. There we go. <laughs> applause. Uh, we uh, we're raking in so much dough here at Comedy Wham that we have invested in a full sound effects soundboard. A sound machine. Yeah. Is it, what it says. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make one of these where that just never stops. You hit one button oh, and yeah. then like the applause just keeps going. They probably have that for like thousands of dollars. Like this a prank is our budget one? right there. It's five buck little. Yeah. Well. I'm stealing this. I'm stealing it. (laughs) That was a long. That was. That was very long. When we did. When we did. No, the last time I did this. Yeah, the last time. Also, I don't remember what my origin story was. Well, the origin story that I remembered because I didn't remember it from back then. I remembered it by re-listening this morning. (laughs) Is that you? You were in high school and you contacted. Okay, I gave you the real one. You contacted Duffy's, a bar mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. Lincoln, yep, yep. and said, "Hey, you know, I still want to going, bring... it's still doing it. It's like the it's long, amazing. the world's longest running open mic every That's Monday. Crazy. I, I bet I every Monday at probably nine o'clock yeah. at Duffy's Tavern, yeah. Lincoln, Nebraska, on O Street. Yeah, I bet they're still doing it. They might be. I mean, you were just there, weren't? Oh no, you weren't. Yeah, You're, I don't. Go, when I go back to Nebraska, I don't. You play full I stay Uncle in. Dad. I see. Yeah, I stay <laughs> in and hang out with my niece and nephew. <laughs> It's funny, you were talking about your niece even back then. <clears throat> oh, she's a nightmare. <laughs> she's a true <laughs> blessing in a nightmare. She's like seven now. Yeah. Just started <sighs> school. You took her on her first day yeah, to, to she school. Yeah, f- she fell in the summer and just busted her teeth. <gasps> she no looked like way. a meth head. And she, the way she sleeps, I don't know how she sleeps, but she wakes up in the morning and her hair is all over. She, looks like a, she looked like a straight up meth head for like a week. <laughs> Missing oh. her two front teeth. Oh, and then, no. Yeah. So I can't stand her. I can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love them. <laughs> I love them. 
um, you, uh, when we talked into that, we've been fans. And I say we because in that first podcast, yeah. you, were, you actually guessed on, on my previous podcast, Radio Tatas, which you can yes. still listen to. I was trying to think of that. And what that was, was such a goofball podcast. And now I'm, you know, serious journo type. This is very podcast. serious. This is a very serious. This is your, this is your WTF moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, and uh, you had just moved to L.A. and... You went with your your friend Cody Hustack. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Who's he's about to have a kid now? Wow! I hope it's his, like and <laughs> I'm his sure wife's. He does. I hope he doesn't. It's not some kid he stole. Yeah. <laughs> now nah, it wouldn't even. It'd be a stolen kid. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's you know a, a gaggle oh, of other. So you're gonna, you're that... gonna see pre L A self destruction or uh, <laughs> soul crud. <laughs> now you're gonna get the bitter. You're gonna get bitter old Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what I figured we would talk about because I think uh, I mean I don't I I don't know if you really consider yourself bitter, but it is interesting. Oh, I've been I've been bitter my whole journey. life. No, really, is that a cover though? No, it's I'm just petty. Uh. Like I just like I get like I I get jealous. I covet. I covet a mm. lot. I get jealous of people's stuff, huh. and, then I, and then I hate them for it. Oh wow! And I think I'm right for that. <laughs> I think I'm right. I think that's an absolutely healthy thing to do. This is why I labeled you the the best absurdist. I'm being absolutely. No, you, <laughs> I, I, you cannot. I cannot ever tell. You know, there's only one interview guest that I ever said. Who am I going to get on this podcast? Mm-hmm. Am I going to get the real? And this was Brendan Walsh. So you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I going to get the real God, Brendan Walsh? That guy Walsh is such or... a freaking coward. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, he's a liar. Once I saw him and I saw him and I love Brandon. Him and uh, Randy Litke used to open up for, um, uh, da, 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 what was it at midnight? Yeah, that was the show, right? The yeah. game show thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's bringing you a gift. Oh, the cat. That's the one-eyed our. That's cat our other bringing, cat. Yeah, the that's... cat is bringing me a one-eyed stuffed <laughs> rabbit. Don't over here, buddy. I know I'm in your blind spot. <laughs> Is that they can't even hear? So now I just sound like I'm... I, yeah. I don't know if he can hear, uh, but he's he is definitely a blind one, and oh, that's Mookie. Mookie is kind of stepping in for Miss Purrington. Okay, she's a uh, she's a little bit of a diva, and she likes. I to... love cats. <laughs> Did I was I working at the kitten nursery when? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, that job, crushing. They wouldn't even let me take any of those dead cats home. <laughs> It was bullshit. Yeah, I had to. <laughs> I did work. We did, there was a lot of dead kittens at that job. Oh. Um, a lot, like, you know, natural deaths, a lot of murder suicides, a lot of. <laughs> and what was the Meowder suicides. <laughs> That's. Why didn't I say that? A lot of meowder. I'll edit it out. Me- we'll just- <laughs> a lot of meowder p- p- suicides. Suicides. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to, I mean, never would I ever be able to do this, but I did want to, you ever seen a dead kitten? They get rigor mortis real so. quick. Oh. They get real stiff real fast. They're tiny, yeah. Uh-huh. They and they could fit in your pocket. So uh, I've always wanted to go on stage and, and like look for, act like I'm looking for my notebook or something to put on the stool and just pull out a dead, a dead ass kitten, like oh a dead God. kitten. And then put it on the stool, and then make, no, that's not it. And then find my notebook. <laughs> but then that's like serial killer stuff. Yeah. Right. People would be like, "Oh yeah, we can't do that." No. But then they wouldn't know that that was a real. Fake. I mean, they probably I smell mean, it. Real dead kid. They well, probably would yeah. smell it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, so you were talking trash about Brendan. Oh my uh, god! No, it was no, so yes. funny watching watching them open. Him and Randy Litke are so absurd, and watching yeah. them open was so. Fu- I just remember one time. I don't. I always talk about this bit, but Brendan Walsh like ran out, and he was just like, "How are you guys doing?" And he holds up holds up these giant, like Jared from Subway pants, and he just holds <laughs> these denim jeans. They're huge. They're uh-huh. like quadruple X X X X X L, and uh, he's holding them. He's like, "Yeah, look at this!" And everybody starts applauding like good for you good for you and he goes can you believe it can you believe it i got these for 5.99 at the goodwill down there or whatever he's like yeah this is a, what a steal he's like they're, they're not mine i just bought them <laughs> like i didn't lose the weight and he just said something like that and it was just the dumbest thing and i was like i think i love this guy yeah yeah he was uh he was pretty funny but just for the record i did get the real brandon walsh so yeah am i gonna get the real ryan county did you get today? the real brandon i thought i did 
But yep. I, I'm very naive. I, what am I going to do? Fact check? Yeah. No. What do you? What? Yeah. Not on that. Yeah. I mean, who's got time for? You that? don't want to Google Brandon Walsh. No. Don't <laughs> safe search on if you do, please. A lot of disturbing images. <laughs> uh, you to me have always been kind of this absurdist personality, and is that something? You know, now that you're back in Austin, and maybe we can. I guess we should do a little history lesson. For people that are, you know, there's a million new people in Austin. Yeah, yeah. New comics, and you were, you know, big time before you Big time, baby. You were were first (laughs) runner-up in the FPIA, uh, which is going on right now, the return of the... I'm the second person to make the most money off of that content. (laughs) Yeah. I think Chris Cubis is the first, because I got second two years in a row, which is like, like $1,500, I think. Was Sounds the right. second price? I think so. And then first place was like 25, because it was the 25th anniversary. That's right. Ah. So technically that first year, Cody made more than me. But then the second year, I got second again. And I'm like, I just made 500 <laughs> more than you, technically. <laughs> Took a year, but. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, then now it's going on. And now it's like a $40 in a gift card to Target <laughs> is like the. Yeah, but it's, there's that whole uh, carrot with the uh, industry mm-hmm. will be there. <laughs> I haven't been out to the new Cap City yet. I need to. I heard it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Ramin did the mural. He did. It looks amazing. He did a few murals. There's two rooms. Okay. He did both murals, and then he's got got a cool uh, David Bowie Ooh. painting that he did. Ramin, another Ramin Nazer. Yeah. I don't even. Is he still doing shows? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he's busy <laughs> podcasting with Shane. That's right. He does the and he's Shane his Moss. art is blowing up. We actually have. I'll show you on. The oh, I've out. got a few. We of have little. an original right at the top of that stairs there. That mm-hmm. is an original uh, Ramin piece. Oh, it's I love that very one. Cool. I don't have. Oh, that's he made, original. He, he made, made a custom. Oh, really? Us. Yeah. You'll have you'll have to there's, look at it. There's closely. one he has that's like the tree, and then there's like a spot. Yeah, I see. There's words on it. I thought those were like spirals. Yeah, he might have, that might have, that obviously was inspired by a lot of his other works where he does do that spiral, but yeah, that one yeah. is like an original piece. Oh, Ramin. So, yeah. So, we're just walking down memory lane here talking about all these these awesome. That's the names. weirdest thing about being back, is just like running people into know. people and then like running yeah. into old coworkers. Because when you're a comedian, you, ha- you have to have like 17 jobs at once. Yeah. It's comedy. He doesn't pay. Yeah. <laughs> no. No, it, it doesn't. And now there's all these, <clears throat> these new faces. You know, that, yeah. that are... Creek in the cave. All these Creek new clubs. New clubs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you left for L.A. What what took you to L.A.? Comedy. I mean, just like the next... I had like a five-year plan when I moved here to like use Austin as like a stepping stone yeah. and then go to L.A. or New York and then the weather kind of is what decides. I should have gone yeah. to New York though. But then I was always doing more acting stuff, so it seemed more like I should go to L.A. Yeah. Oh, boy. It was fun, but it was... I'm I'm glad I did it when I was that age, because yeah. I would not go back. Hmm. But it was fun, thanks to people like Brendan Walsh and, like, <laughs> Doug. Literally, that was like, there was a little Austin crew, and we yeah. all hung out. And then there was, like, that period every year one of our little Austin friends would die. So then we all, <laughs> so then we all would get to... It was, like, nice to have a... <laughs> Who's it going to be this like, year? Like, for real, like that. It'd be like me, Brendan, Doug Mellard, David Huntsberger, Carrie Lindo. Um, I'm missing a bunch of names. Just like 10 of us. Well, like Andy Ritchie. We watched yeah. that go down at the hospital. LaShonda. It was nice to have them around when, with LaShonda. And it was nice that LaShonda happened when I was out of town because people were starting to question me about all these deaths. And they're oh, like, no. Ryan, oh, is this no. you? Because yeah. we'd go party. I'd yeah. get them on that five-hour energy. I'd get them hooked. <laughs> and then look what happens. Some people yeah. can't hang. <laughs> Some people can't hang on that five-hour. <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a brutal drug for sure. For sure. There's, there's, it's dangerous. There's rehab facilities it's popping delicious, up left though. and right. Well. You know, I got carted in Iowa. <laughs> for buying five-hour energy seriously yeah you have to be over 18 which wow. i agree with i yeah. think because that's stuff that's makes you oh yeah immortal. his friends i mean for all i know he is but um uh, five yeah, of your friends, kids his friends they they down that stuff oh it's like that's so they're gonna unhealthy. have like heart disease at 20 they're gonna grow an extra arm that would be or nice <laughs> an extra they're swimmers arm. so that would help well then they need two <laughs> they're just swimming in circles <laughs> Two extra, or like centipede style. Yeah. 
<laughs> no, coming back to Austin is great, though. It's wait. So all right. So you had a five year plan for Austin, and what? then after five, yeah, and we kind of got there. Like Cody and I were like, well, let's get better. Let's get start getting booked. Let's win the contest, and then we kind of did some of that, and then yeah. we went to L.A. to to make it. And uh, I just it just opened my eyes a lot. It mm-hmm. was very humbling. Yeah. But also really fun. The comedy out there is just more business and not the fun way. Everybody's network. Everybody's yeah. trying to do something, and I'm like, can we just let's just drink? I remember the first. <laughs> I remember the first show I went to, I had a show on at the Meltdown, rest in peace. Um, that was the At Midnight Guys. Why can't I think of his name? I can't, now I can't think Travis? of Travis? Trevor? The host? Yes. Adam? Uh, no. Some dork. God bless. Some nerd. He did the nerd, the nerd we, podcast. Yeah, we have to stop thinking about it because yes. it'll come to us. Well, this guy's a dork. And somebody and right now ma- is listening to this saying, you motherfucking idiots. Mm-hmm. They're just screaming. Yeah, they're that. screaming the name right now. And we apologize to you. Right I now. don't. The guy's a dork. I don't care. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> yeah, he got canceled at one point. So yeah. Did he? Oh, yeah. And then he married into Johnson & Johnson. He's oh, fine. Gosh. He's yeah, doing so, fine. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, God, what, now that is going to bug me. <laughs> That's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> You know, as I like to say, if only there was a small handheld device. Why don't you fill if the time? If only there with that? was a. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna so be mad at ourselves. Well, now I forgot what I, where I was even freaking going. Oh, you were. Oh, at Meltdown. Yeah. yeah, and it was his. Chris Hardwick. Chris Hardwick. Chris Dorktown. <laughs> um, it was so funny because I'd go hang out at at midnight because I knew like Brendan and like um Chris Cubis would always come into town to mm-hmm. do it. And I was there once, and it was Chris Hardwick's birthday. It was like his a big, like a forty, forty fifth, or something, wow. like you know, a milestone one. And I was just standing there, po- pocketing free food. They had like <laughs> their craft service had like individually packaged stuff. So I was just, I would oh, literally wow. go there once a week and just <laughs> stock up. And I was doing that, and then they came in, like his cat, like the PAs, the casting and staff came in singing a song with the birthday and there's like 15 people and all of a sudden i'm in the middle of it like with the staff and i swear there's a video out there where you can just see me with like a <laughs> fistful of laffy taffy and uh <laughs> and i was just like in the middle of this work event singing happy birthday uh-huh. to chris hardwick and i don't nobody even noticed that mm. i was like in there but everyone's filming on their cell phone i'm like this is intimate should yeah. i leave <laughs> um no that was fun though did you go there with with a similar like five year plan for yourself? No, yeah, I'm no, not really. Did you feel you were not prepared for what LA I might be? I don't prepare. Okay. I really don't like preparing. I um, really enjoy kind. It stresses my parents out. Um, I'm just kind of floating. Also, what is that called? White privilege. I'm kind of just. <laughs> I'm taking advantage of that sucker, and I'm just floating through yeah. life. This is now the first time I don't have like a f- actual forward thinking plan mm. and it's kind of nice i'm just retired i mean, I mean i'm still working yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> oh no i was at meltdown first show out in la and i go there thinking they're gonna have beer right they're gonna they sell they're gonna have something yeah nope they're like no but you can go to the liquor store and buy something and bring it in if you're kind of incognito and so i went and got a tall boy and i'm drinking it every single comedian in the back of the room was like, are you drinking? You know you're going up tonight, right? Oh. And I was like, yes, that's part of the reason why I'm drinking. And <laughs> like, we're hanging. Yeah, I'm going up to do jokes, to be goofy, right? Huh. And I'm like, you guys need to be sober for that? And uh, I had just so much judgment. And they're like, this is like a job. And I'm like, I ain't getting paid. I'm yeah. not even getting, usually I get a free drink. Like, what the hell? <laughs> so right out the gate, I was like, oh, this is yeah. not this, not as fun. You were doing movies and, and videos, and I mean, you're in the heart of everything's caught on video, and it's cast and whatever. Yeah. I mean, you were in a, in a Mecca area. Yeah, and I had a commercial agent, and I drive an hour to Santa Monica to do commercial auditions, like, sometimes three times, a, or I'd have three auditions a day, and I'd drive an hour to do, like, five, to walk in and be like, pizza? <laughs> Never heard of this stuff. And they'd be like, all right, we'll keep in touch. And I'll be like, I just drove an hour for a 30-second thing that I didn't get. Yeah. It was wild. Truly bizarre. Auditioning is really bizarre. They'd be like, could you, um, one of them was for like a sports thing, and they're like, could you take your shirt off and like swing it around like you're cheering for your team? And I go, no, 
I go, I'll do it in the commercial, but no, I'm not hmm. taking my shirt off <laughs> in this weird casting thing. But, uh, <laughs> the cat. <laughs> He's now taking his little mouse rabbit outside. Gosh, cats. Yeah, well, and then one, somebody brought an b- actual baby in. And the thing is, I would get to, like, the third audition. Yeah. Like, I'd get the third call back, and then I never would get it. And it was so infuriating, because then I'd see the Taco Bell commercial, like, two months later. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't even look like me. Like, they, <laughs> that's a completely different person. Yeah. But, yeah, some lady brought in, it's like this Taco Bell commercial where you dunk churros into, like, you don't need hands or something for your dipping sauce. <laughs> Whatever. It's some cheesy... And the commercial would have been, I would have had to help hold somebody's baby, and I put like a ramekin of dipping sauce on the baby's head and dip it. Somebody brought an actual baby oh into the gosh. audition, and they made me hold some strain. Wow. But I'm like, y'all, parents, don't get your kids into Hollywood, yeah. ever. Yeah. Let them do it, if they want to do it. Weirdos. Huh. Bringing a baby? Letting, a, letting me? Hardcore. I didn't even introduce yeah. myself, and this mother handed me their infant. So I took that baby. That's, that's I took that baby thing, home. Yeah. <laughs> I stole that baby. <laughs> Oh no, those babies Race are probably worth something. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> oh, and now he's back. Okay. Just showing off. <laughs> showing off the little rat toy. That was so hilarious. <laughs> he really likes you, I think. So, how long did it take you to get completely soured off of that whole, whole thing? I feel like my bitterness is not fair because i moved out there with a girlfriend in a long-term relationship and then that immediately started going downhill oh. like then we started breaking up like year one out there and it oh. took like a year to break up because we lived together so that's more of the, where the jadedness mm. comes from also i'm not i'm not i don't have any money so it's really hard to live out there yeah. without any money yeah it and it's not fun to yeah. not have money out there but what about shows? You hosted some, shows. and Yes. we had, Cody and I had a backyard show. That was really fun. We turned our little garden. There was like a built-in garden thing that we just killed all the plants on top and put <laughs> wood on top. Put, literally turned it into a cool little stage. Yeah. And we had Brendan Walsh on. Um, yeah, we had a bunch of people on. That was fun. We only did about six of them before our lease was up. Ugh. Out Not in Boyle it. Heights. No, I had a lot of fun out there. There's a lot of silly nights. Yeah. Very silly nights. When did you start thinking you were going to go some go leave LA? Honestly, I'm glad COVID forced me out mm. cuz I probably would have stayed there as long as possible. Right before COVID was like, this is my last year at this lease. Personally, it wasn't I wasn't getting kicked out or anything, but I was like I need to move on. The girl I was like Barbara uh, Babs Gray, she's a very oh, funny yeah. comedian out there, mm-hmm. um, and that's where I got all the half of those props yeah, were. Yeah. Half of those props were hers. What the muscle suit was hers. Yep. <laughs> her ass came in. I love living with comics. Uh, <laughs> her ass came in one day with a legitimate rubber like muscle suit that was the same <laughs> skin tone as her. She bought the same skin tone, and I walked downstairs, and it looked like she was just topless, right? <laughs> Cause it, you couldn't see, you know what ones I'm talking about? Yeah, like the yeah. rubber nasty, she yeah. spent like probably $400 on it or I don't know. And she was just like doing dishes. And I, I was like, I, I walked down and I just saw her just absolutely muscular back, just shirtless. And I was like, no, I was like, oh, she did, maybe she didn't know I was home. And she's just doing dishes topless. I don't know, is that a thing girls do? And I walked down, I was like, oh, I sorry. And she turned around and it was just Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> But it was seamless. Uh-huh. And I was like, ah. That was the funniest. <laughs> shock, the most shocking reveal. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was so fun. <laughs> and I think she wore it once. Oh, and then she had a mask. She bought a mask of her own face. <laughs> like a rubber mask. <laughs> wow. It was terrifying. That's commitment. It was, and it did not. It looked like somebody would cut her face off and wore her, <laughs> like her actual skin. <laughs> so that was fun. I had fun out there. I moved in with Barbara, a little broken heart, a little broken hearted boy. We, she poured wine and we watched the, the entirety of Sex in the City that first year. <laughs> and then she really baby birded me. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. And then Comedy Wham! That was so fun. It was so, f- or the Zoom shows. Yeah. yeah. So fun. Um, 
because I do like a couple during quarantine, people were doing like Facebook live or FaceTime live yeah. or whatever, Instagram live. And yeah. I would do them and I'd watch people do them and they would just be like, yeah, so everything sucks or right? everything's crazy. And they're just like, just a venting, which is good. Yeah. People needed it at that time. But I'm like, I'm just going to put on a wig and make some crap up. That's what you have to do. I mean, you don't get an audience to really respond to you. You know, everybody that was in on the show was in the Zoom room. So yeah. they, you know, sometimes You could see react. a ha 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 or every, yeah, every once, once in a while. A while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, if you just treat it like, oh, I'm just going to do a little sketch. Yeah. I'm just going to goof. Yeah. And, and goof you did. And goof, I <laughs> goofed. You know, I haven't seen as, what's his name? The host. I, this is so early for me. It's like 2 p.m. But I can't think of names. Colton. Yes. I haven't seen him. Seriously? Since being, I mean, I did one. Actually, no. I saw him at um, the High Plains Comedy Festival. Oh. Not even this year. <laughs> last year's in Colorado. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there was a weird nomadic period post-quarantine where I was like not living anywhere. And I was like, I was filming a movie here in Austin last August huh. for a month. And then I was in Colorado for about three weeks. Hmm. Nebraska for like four months. How was that, being a little nomad? I had to move back into my parents' mm. basement. I moved out when I was 18. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had to move back in. At, I turned 32, 31 and 32 in my parents' basement. Wow. Depressing. Financially, it was dope. Good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But did you have to... <laughs> but um, it's my, my family drinks. Uh. And well, some people in my family are not good at drinking. Hmm. Most people in my family aren't good at drinking. <laughs> no, they're good at drinking. They're bad at therapy. So it's like they're bad at d- discussion. So there was a lot of drunken, weird, COVID, political, oh. drunk. Yeah, and I'm like, can't we just be goofy? Let me wear a wig. Always. You're always goofy. How do, you, how do people deal with that? Or how do you deal when people are like, stop being a well, goofy? I'm single, so <laughs> that's not well. <laughs> that that was a huge problem not a problem but in like because we'd be in fights and i've done comedy more than i've done relationships so like we'd be in, in the middle of a fight and somebody the person would say she'd you'd say something not just one specific this is multiple girls yeah. <laughs> say something and i'm like well i can't not <laughs> you just set up like this thing and it's such a serious that's my favorite yeah. thing is to get things really serious and then goof, yeah. and then like turn it around, and I'd get laughs in the middle of these arguments, and then that would piss them off even more. Yeah. And then, but then it, sometimes it derails the argument, and then realize like, oh, this is stupid. But mostly people get annoyed. That's, uh, I mean, it's such a tough thing. Like I, I, you describing that situation about how it's your favorite thing to get something like go yeah. super serious, and then just. The train joke, the train dad joke. Oh, like, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna start doing that again. <laughs> that was so good because you took it. Uh, you took oh, it yeah. about as far dark <laughs> as you could possibly get, and then. Oh, that one's know. stupid. I like that one too because it's all like act out, so I don't yeah. have to write anything. <laughs> there you go. That's my writing style. <laughs> lazy that's my lifestyle that's my flow yeah. like i want to live with it and exert the least amount of effort yeah. what are they called the scrubs no probably i don't yeah. want no scrub <laughs> a scrub is a guy who can't get no love hanging out the passenger side no i'll be driving i'm gonna scrub what with are you a gonna car. drive though you don't have a job i got a Not- nissan i got a job <laughs> i sell feet pics on <laughs> i put my feet in spaghetti and i am banking have you seen this? <laughs> no, I have not. Have you seen people like literally, uh, who was the Catch Me Outside girl? You uh-huh. remember her? You yeah, know yeah, that yeah. whole? Yeah. And then she did like a rap song that actually slaps. <laughs> and uh, now she's like, put it. everyone's like, where'd Catch Me Outside girl go? And then she posted her like bank statement. And it was, she made like $175,000 in like three months, literally selling uh, on OnlyFans. No nudity. She did no nudity. She was selling like pictures of her feet, pictures of her, just her, and she made a hun- almost two hundred thousand oh, dollars in like two months or something. All I'm right. like, dang. Well, there we go. Let's start catch selling me pictures of her online. Feet. Yeah, yeah, catch me online. <laughs> catch 
catch his feet online. <laughs> the internet is so weird. It's going too fast. Yeah, yeah. It is uh, definitely hard to keep up. And now, you know, most podcasts up. are, you know, they're recorded with video and i'm like i can't I yeah can't, we do I the men on it. film one we do is all zoom and that yeah that's the one that's gonna get me canceled hmm. why is that uh, we just got like our fan base is like a come town fan base trickle down you mm. familiar yeah yeah a lot of incels probably <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cowards <laughs> no we just get dirty mm. it's just you listen to it, it's just me dropping the in bomb <laughs> right now <laughs> Like, I, if anything's gonna get me canceled, like, yeah, buddy, that's it's 175 episodes. You're gonna of me. edit out, yeah. That you promoted this podcast. Oh. <laughs> you're on, but you're on. Why should we? Care why should we in the, care? In the is so fun. The return. We're like, I don't know, 10, 15 episodes deep. Yeah, that is. You can check that out. Why should we care? You can see that on YouTube because we is, got like a nice little studio set up. Yeah, it's so stupid. The premise is we just dumb. bring somebody in, but we nobody bring has a guest done it better. In. <laughs> they, yeah, and, and nobody I used, cares less than Chris. Tellis. Than Chris Tellis yeah. uh, and AJ and Henderson. AJ, yeah. And I, so I used to call into that. From yeah, LA. I, I would call in as like a character, and now I'm just yeah. the third host. I'm the guy on the couch, and it's so awesome. <laughs> and we record at like ten in the morning, so I'm just showing up drinking twisted tea. <laughs> <laughs> I need to figure out a way to get get back on there because uh, uh, Laura and I did an episode. Yeah, what did y'all do? Uh, podcasts. <laughs> I didn't call into that one, did I? I don't remember if you did. And they were so mad because we. I brought my computer and I did a. I had prepared a pot a presentation. Yeah. A PowerPoint. Oh, we got a TV I now. Knew. We could have done it. Because <laughs> I knew that would get Chris so so pissed. annoyed. <laughs> it's so easy to get Chris yeah, annoyed. <laughs> but then you know we we just talked about podcast. Here's how I get Chris tell as annoyed. I uh, <laughs> I will. Um, not like one of his photos on instagram and then he will unsubscribe unlike block <laughs> no. mute, block my phone no he won't yes no, he won't. i love chris tellers he's a really good friend but it is like being best friends with a 13 year old girl sometimes <laughs> <laughs> and that attitude is perfect for why should we care yeah yeah because then we'll get people in like actually actually trying to be like climate change and like mm-mm, mm-mm. <laughs> no <laughs> Yeah. You understand the podcast? We don't care. <laughs> yeah, I need to find. I need to to pitch another idea. I haven't figured it out yet, though. Oh yeah. I well, now we got. It. We always we're like bring it up on the screen. Oh, so my gosh. we could. You could yeah. do a presentation. <laughs> <I could. laughs> so you came back to Austin a year ago. It's oh been a God! Year? Yeah, okay. November, October, last Octo- last November maybe. And last what- October, I was here for Halloween. Okay. I'm going to be honest, though. I have to go to the bathroom here. Okay. Okay, I'm going right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have one? Okay, well, while uh, Ryan's doing what he's, he needs to be doing, I'm going to go up to the, the wall and record. Let's see what's happening. Oh. Right. Ryan. Uh, help. <laughs> Why is this, this the same? That would be... Oh, no. You, you know, you always oh, get a little right. excited when you, when you have a good dunk. <laughs> Listen, if you're if you're sitting down, just taking a thick crap, <laughs> gross. <laughs> and if you don't, if you as a man, if you don't get the boy <laughs> is the, not your final noise. You ain't pooping right. Change your diet. Change your diet. <laughs> I have no idea what we were talking about before. before oh, the bathroom was... She sent me out to, like, outside. Like, there's no oh, yeah. bathroom. No, actually, I really like... Are you native? Are you indigenous? Uh, I like the... <laughs> you have a you have a beautiful is, petrified wood art of a, a Native a American. bone of contention with me and my mom because I am mortified about that painting that's it's, in my mom's area. Oh, Okay. But she justifies by hanging on to it because her husband, my father, was part indigenous. Like 170th? Well, I think it One was of a those? little more than oh, that. Okay. But well, I am. You know, yeah, I am. So. I was born in uh, Sioux City, Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. So true. technically, <laughs> Sioux City. I'm part of the Sioux, Sioux, tri- Sioux City tribe. Well, no, go. that is probably super offensive. I am not. I'm Syrian. Yeah. 25%. Well. Actually. Wow. 
well, learn something every every time we sit down and talk I don't know anything to. about Syria. <laughs> other than my grandma used to say, tell people you're from Lebanon. Huh. Because it was, I think Syria is the bad boys uh, of that war. Yeah. And hmm. I say, nah, I'm Syrian. Jib Janain, Syria. That's all I know. Okay. I, it's more than I know. That'd be a cool... Oh. Why, that'd be such a cool city. Jib Janain? Where are you from? Ah, Jib Janain. <laughs> what? Jib Janain? Huh? <laughs> Jib Janain? <laughs> it's a fun word. Again, that's probably offensive. Am I just... Uh, you might be. I might, yeah, I have to I'm that white. That's what we do. I'm oh, a cis God. white male. That's like <laughs> anything I say is going to... Can be. I bought this. I went thrift shopping, right? Um, cause I'm on a budget. We're going to lay over, and, uh, <laughs> Macklemore over the Oh pond. yeah, I forgot. That. <laughs> uh, I was just about to quote it unintentionally, <laughs> unintentionally. And I was, I was walking around looking at Tommy Bahama style t-shirts and I saw this one that's got American flags on it. There's like a statue, a faded statue of Liberty. And then like all the scribbles, it's the constitution is all over. We, the people's the oh. first paragraph, uh, and something I was like that. No, I can't buy that. I'll never wear that. And then I walked past it again, and some, it was a gut feeling, I was like, buy that. So I bought it and put it on to show my friends, uh, uh, and they were like, absolutely not. I just immediately <laughs> looked like a racist person. Yeah. It's insane. Just wearing the American flag now. So I, I mean, I wore it all day. <laughs> You're wearing it now. I'm wearing it right, wearing right it now. Over right ever. now. <laughs> and you're carrying it. I uh, noticed that when you walked in. Your, yeah, I, I, was, I walked in. I go, where do I, um, do you have a spot for my tiki torch? <laughs> do you have a tiki torch hanger? I'm so sick of these people ruining cool shit. Tiki torches were so cool. They were practical. You put on the corner of your deck. Yeah. That looked great. Yeah, yeah. Let's knock it off, you racists. Stop. <sighs> have you guys ever thought, of, hey, racist, you ever thought about it? Knock it off, you dork. Yeah. You dork. <laughs> I was tied up between dingus and dork, and I didn't know. Uh, Ryan, halfway in in through my my podcast, I like to do this thing. It's from a card game called Where Should We Begin? And I've got two cards here that I randomly picked out of the deck. Did you randomly pick? Because I did did not see it. I was literally doing it in front of you at the very beginning. I don't pay attention to things, ever. It's true. (laughs) (laughs) I believe that. Take one, read it out loud, okay. and then... Uh, this is beautiful. This is a cool design. It is a cool design. Yeah, on the back the of these car- cards. the box itself is... Something people often misunderstand about me. Hmm. Well, my mortality, first of all. I'll do the... I'll do the I say I can't die. I can't. And people just don't it's, take that at true. face value. Yeah. I don't think any of us can. Um, something people often misunderstand about me. Huh. Should I answer it seriously? Probably. Yeah. So I, I goof all the time, right? Mm-hmm. That's because I do not feel that way on the inside all the time. <laughs> I, love I love it. I love I love ma- like getting somebody to laugh. There's like laughing and sneezing are two like an uncontrolled like a legitimate laugh and a sneeze. You just yeah. can't there's some sort of feeling of relief. I don't know how to compare that. I've never said it like this. So I don't know. <laughs> When you sneeze, there's like a release feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. You kind of, I mean, it's uncomfortable, but then you feel good. Same with a laugh. And you don't think about anything other than this. you're in the moment. Mm-hmm. You're sneezing, you're laughing. I don't know why I'm... Comp- yeah. Sneeze is a good one, I think. Yeah. Um, it forces you to be in the moment. I think about the future, the past, whatever. And I love that feeling. So I love trying to make people do that, trying to goof and... Yeah, so I'm going to have to die alone about it. I'm going to have to die. I'm a, I'm a martyr. Because you can't stop goofing. What else? Something that people... I uh, Another thing is, I joke about the size of my hog. <laughs> it is not massive. <laughs> technically speaking. Technically, it's gigantic. Like, the doctor says it's yeah. giganticism or whatever. Giganticism? Uh-huh. Giganticism? Yeah. How do you say that? Why am I saying isism? <laughs> Gigantism. Gigantism. Gigantism, though, is what he's. I don't know. Well, it's because gigantism is um, when you have a giant dong, a gigantic <laughs> dong that also is on the spectrum. <laughs> gigantism. So, I've got an autistic ass, big ass dong. <laughs> what? 
and that is that is literally the sound. I do this joke on stage where I talk about doing doing sex with a gal, and that's literally the noise I make. <laughs> What I'm talking about? <laughs> this is reminding me of so many jokes that I, I don't write so down good. anything, so I forget. If I don't do them on stage, uh-huh. I forget. <laughs> <sighs> okay, let's see. <laughs> a conversation I've been meaning to have. So it's my turn. I picked the other okay. card. A conversation I've been meaning to have. Uh, let's see. This better be religious. <laughs> you know God's up there waiting. He's just sitting there waiting by the phone. Uh, Ryan, I've brought you here today because I've brought all of your friends and families. They're all coming Uh out. Yeah, that sounds like an intervention, a conversation I've been meaning to have. You wrote that. So this is a handwritten on the card. She sharpied over. I don't know. A conversation I've been meaning to have, I don't know. Big guy upstairs. Big guy upstairs, I guess. Listen, I don't even do, I I come on comedy on podcasts now to proselytize. I don't. I guess. Do comedy yeah. anymore. So <laughs> if you don't, if y'all don't got the word of God out there, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> you got to touch. Uh, yeah, I can't. I actually can't answer that. I feel like I, I get everything out that I need to get out. You, have you talked um, to anybody about your car's extended warranty? <laughs> I refuse those calls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if you're here to try to sell me on it, then get out. <laughs> I would love I to mean, be I mean, the a... people, the main people in my life, you know, I tell them what I, yeah. what I feel. And... What about yourself? You got any internal conversations you've been putting off? I, I need to exercise. <laughs> what about, I think you should talk to your mom about the Native American... <laughs> It was my dad's, and his mother is. Oh, that counts. That's right. Navajo, I think. That's she cool. she spoke Spanish, so I never could communicate with her. Oh, really? But you know, she didn't I, I speak any it. English. Mm-mm. Hmm. No, cause I bet like she did. Deep South Texas. She just didn't so want to talk to you. This <laughs> could be it. I was ah. a smartass too. I was one of those because I'm white. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've got the last name of Lopez, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm very white. And she probably thought oh, this pretentious white girl. Yeah, you are so you're you're you are so white <laughs> that when, I, white when I? I asked if you had somewhere to put my tiki torch, you had a tiki torch <laughs> hanger right there at the front door. And you're like, yeah, I can move my tiki torch to put yours on there. <laughs> For the record, I didn't do not have any, <laughs> any tiki, tiki torch. torch. Listen, I have luau's without tiki torches. That's how anti-racist I There's am. There's mosquitoes back there. I need those for the citronella. I was going to say you got to get the, just get the citronella plant. It works. I actually did get one. Did it work? I don't know if it works. Everybody says know. it does, and I don't think it <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so tell me, you, you came back to Austin last, you were here by Halloween. Uh, what God, it's been has, a year, huh? Yeah, it's getting close to a year. Hmm. What has it been like coming back to this very different scene? I mean, you, your your good comedy friends are still here. Well, yeah, Chris, I'm lucky okay, enough. Chris is still here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky enough to be able to do shows. Yeah. Like without having to like go to open my. I know people. I like. I got a rolodex of people, so I can do. <laughs> I still have a rolodex. Yeah. Uh, they still make them. I think. Uh, so I'm lucky. I, I something about COVID or like quarantine specifically changed me. I mean, and I'm also 33 now, so maybe that's maybe I'm just getting older. I don't I lost a lot of anxieties that I previously had mm. before quarantine. Um I don't care as much. Like I'm I think I'm just too tired. I'm not going to go out to open mic. I don't think I'll ever do an open mic again in my life yeah. <laughs> if I can I and I like doing them, but There's yeah, a I don't really I don't have that like ambition that I had 10 years ago. Yeah. Because I don't know, I don't know what it is. I I think it's so much more fun to do comedy with this attitude. Yeah. Of like, I'm not stressed about. I'll be stressed if it goes bad or whatever. But honestly, I've never bombed. So I've never had a bad set. I've never written a bad joke. I've never. And this is, might sound a little arrogant, but you're getting the real Ryan now. I've never um, not have had sex after a show. <laughs> I've never. <laughs> Um, 
It is true that you've never bombed because that's like I've never on bombed. recording, like mm-hmm. that's on a movie. Absolutely it's on never a, bombed. Your self-titled documentary. I've never bombed. If anybody says that I have, they're not around. You know what I mean? Right. So you know what that means. I know people. Right. Right. <sighs> <laughs> I had a relative go um, to. Nah, I shouldn't say this. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't know if they listen to this. My, I, they are supporters of my craft. <laughs> How how do you um, so you you have you have and I'm just gonna pick his name Chris Tellis mm-hmm. who is performing all the time around town yeah, and yeah. out and of town. Yeah, he's got like good management. He's been doing well. Right, and so it's easy to get booked on shows that are you know the friends that have been around before yeah. the pandemic. Are are you this are you disengaged enough? In your attitude about, well, I don't care. You know, I just want to perform. And yeah, have I never, fun. I never really cared though about like what other people were doing. But do if you want to try to get? Like, well, I'm trying to see. Do you want to try to get into some of the the shows that are by pe- new, the newer faces no. in town? Oh no, I mean, I'm not against it, but. But you're I, not going to go out and. I will. Seek I it. will. I just haven't had the urge. I'm just kind of mm-hmm. following my gut right now. Yeah. And kind of just doing what I want. Which I guess I've always done what I want, so I don't know what. <laughs> Nothing's changed. I really enjoy hanging out in my room. Like I really enjoy. I get along with myself very well. So quarantine was not a problem. Yeah. Um. <laughs> a little cat sneeze. Oh, big boy. Oh goodness. Um. Uh. No. I. So I. I don't like. I don't want to go stand at a comedy show uh, open mic for like 20 minutes i'm not book i'm not running any shows if i start running shows i'll probably go like just see because i need to book it so i'll go see who is who but i think i'm just old Hmm. (laughs) but you're not i know but i used to be the 21 year old yeah when i moved here i mean you did start really young yeah and now i'm like oh is that what i was like (laughs) (laughs) i just can't keep up with these kids Doing TikToks and stuff. See, I, I didn't have all that, too, yeah, when I was, like, yeah. it was just going and doing shows and then, like, maybe goofy YouTube videos, but... TikTok seems like the perfect thing for you. I, I know I've told yeah, you If it would have happened, if I feel like I'm off a couple years. I either should have been born, like, three years earlier or, like, three years later. I don't think because so. Because I missed, I missed, like, Vine. I started to get traction on Vine yeah. the second it started ending and then TikTok replaced that. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to put effort into this one. <laughs> also, de- depression makes things really, it makes it really hard to want to, because you're doing everything. Yeah. Like, I was filming the videos, editing them on my phone, and they're not like, I'm not doing like editing. But, yeah. you know, they're, you've seen them. They're like, <laughs> yeah. I tried to make it as effortless as possible. And then you get like a couple thousand views and likes or whatever, and then it's like, okay. Well, I just spent a whole day doing that. Yeah. I just, I don't want to do that every day. But I felt like it was a job, it was a job, it was a job, even yeah. though it wasn't. What about your rap career? I don't think you can rap after 30 as a white person. <laughs> I don't think. We got your Macklemore sure. We got your. <laughs> <laughs> no, I made a really sad album. All That's like pretty much all acoustic. Well, not really. I made um, a quarantine album that I don't promote. <laughs> um, you can find it the corn the coronado uh, yeah i just i like i don't know C- quarantine was I, I maybe spent a little too much time with myself um yeah the coronado kids on dot bandcamp.com you could see it it's me and my buddy ian who's like learning how to play the guitar so it's very simple uh-huh. um, but that's my emo album and then I made like a dance album before that. Yeah, I haven't done rap in a while. It feels weird as an adult. That's another thing too. Is like it <laughs> feels. I don't understand how people start doing comedy after thirty hmm. and not feel embarrassed. <laughs> you know that? Like, not, I'm not trying to be a dick, I guess, but doing it when I started at seventeen, you, I had that. I'm immortal. I can do it. I'm yeah, seventeen. Just yeah. that ignorance, like that. You, I haven't been beaten down by life yet yeah. i don't think i would start at 33 no i I had that narcissism early i caught that narcissism <laughs> early do you do you write new stuff well you said you don't like to write well i write on stage it, it, i don't know i feel like i do write like i'll write notes and so, like uh, 
it gets to a point though i feel like in comedy and i don't know i've talked to some people and they some other comics and they've had the same like after a point you kind of find your voice hopefully Mm -hmm. and then after that and i remember a specific moment where because i was writing like one-liners and then actually writing stuff out for the first like four years of stand up you know doing it normally um i mean there still were stupid silly jokes but there was just, I f- feel like there was one year, it was the year I moved here, where I was like, I'm just going to get weird, like wacky. I just don't want to have fun. Huh. And then that's what I've been doing since. But I write a lot on stage because I'll do a lot of crowd work and a lot of, I leave a lot of empty space intentionally because it's like, see what you can do. <laughs> see what you can do. Hopefully I don't have to rely on my written stuff in the end game uh also laziness it's easier to not write (laughs) so not getting up all the time was difficult yeah i got so rusty over that year and a half of not doing a live show Mm -hmm. how often are you going up these days quite a bit the last few months i did i had two shows friday night i was at hotel vegas which was great and then the velve which happened and (laughs) (laughs) It was good, though. I, I dedicated my whole 10-minute Valve set to f- trying to find something out of this one little bit I've been doing. It's, I've been talking about having sex with God, and, <laughs> and I've only got about 30 seconds of it, and I spent 10 minutes. They did not like it, so I was like, it was a petty moment. Uh, one specific person in the crowd, with the second I was like talking about having sex with God, I want to have sex with God or whatever I said, they go, oh, oh like oh, one of those. Yes. And I was like, you, that was the wrong. I even, I think I said, I go, that was the wrong noise. <laughs> the petty right Here we go. Out. And I was like, okay, because I'm trying to like figure out where I'm going to, where this bit's going to uh-huh. go. So y'all are now the guinea pigs. <laughs> and I spent seven minutes and it was like a couple things got laughs. And I was uh-huh. like, I got absolutely nothing out of it though. Mm. I was like, maybe one or two words. God, I have to pee again. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh, God. Well, Mate's a diuretic, right? Oh, oh are you right? destroying my mom's back? No, a diuretic is not. Do people believe that? Diuretic is pee. It's, oh, is it? Yeah, oh. it's it's like a diarrhea. Diarrheal. It's like short for diarrheal, which is like. Uh, may, may, it's a I guess. yeah. A di- it just means your body. Okay. <sighs> Somebody, I, I can. I gotta finish this. I gotta figure this out because Ashley Overton. I said that to her the other day. Uh-huh. I was like, I took. I was taking a probiotic, like some gut thing. Yeah. And it was also a diuretic. And I said that to her. I was like, God, I gotta pee because I just peed like twenty times in ten minutes. Jeez. And <laughs> Are you sure you don't have a UTI? <laughs> no, it was. I was taking it for my stuff. I had gut problems at the time. And she's like, Wait, so you're just going in there? You just have crazy diarrhea? <laughs> and I go, What? <laughs> First of all, if I had crazy diarrhea, I wouldn't be saying that. I would yeah. probably if I if I went in and diarrheaed five times in <laughs> twenty minutes. That's a problem. Give me and I'm not you're not seeing me drink any water. I'm dying. That's dysentery. <laughs> and, and she's like, yeah, that's what I thought. And I was like, that's, that's disgusting. How many people are you telling I got diarrhea? <laughs> but now you're the second person yeah. in like a month to no God. I've been on dates. Talking about diuretics, because like a five-hour energy is a uh-huh. diuretic. Any any Red Bull, anything yeah. with niacin and like B12 is a diuretic. Huh. They're just anything that makes you pee. Lick booze is a, a diuretic, oh, yeah. I yeah. guess. Dang. Well, all right. Well, all right. So anybody listening, if I say I got a diuretic, I ain't. <laughs> and it would definitely not sound like that. It would sound like if I, if here's my diarrhea sound. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> this picture a water balloon spray of green. Not brown. It's green. <laughs> it's golden. Shit's golden. The show I don't co host anymore. <laughs> I got fired. Christelle's fired because Aww, shit's golden. Because my shit's green. Oh, Chris. <laughs> All right, BRB, we'll sorry. <laughs> All right, Ryan is back. Did you find it? Oh, Ryan, that was that was not polite. Oh yeah. Oh. I mean. Oh, Ryan. Again. <laughs> uh. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> yeah. We've got Ryan County back here. He is. Uh, he can't die. And. Uh, I can't die, yeah. but I can die a uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> See, what's but funny I is am... I knew how to spell it. I just had Did no it pop idea. up? Yeah, yeah. It's G-I-U-R... Diu- it just sounds like R-E-T-I-C. diarrhea. Yeah. What else? There's a, something else that I was... Uh, I say things a lot, and then later people are like, what? And I'm like, no, that's not what that... No. Oh, you didn't know what that meant, so now I look like a freaking weirdo. <laughs> what was it? It's something... Ah, whatever. So did you really get fired from Shit's Golden? Yes. Fired my ass. Why? Who fired you? Chris. Nah. Um... <laughs> No, it was amicable. It, it so I like came back into town. It just, I mean, it was it didn't make sense to have three of us on there, mm-hmm. and then we didn't prepare. It was just he was changing the format of the show yeah. too. I think they do like piggyback style now. Oh, I don't know what that means. I've so actually I, never been to. Well, no, that's not true. I went to one, and I have a pet peeve that if your show start time is nine, mm-hmm. don't keep me waiting till nine thirty to start. I just so you know Chris Tallows, right? <laughs> He is never on time. Yeah. <laughs> He's fine. I feel like I was just talking shit about Chris. Yeah, well, you know, why should we care? He f- I, why should we care? Why should we freaking care? It's not like he's going to listen to this. He better. Oh, that's true. Petty ass. So he, uh, <laughs> one time I asked him, I was like, hey, man, what are you doing tonight? And he goes, uh, uh, he goes, this is, I feel like this is like it, weird. Sometimes I feel like we're dating him. <laughs> And he goes, he goes, I mean, I posted all my shows on my stories. And I go, okay, what are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm not going to go to your, like, what? I was, like, trying to hang out. Like, I don't care about what shows you're doing. Like, it is dating. I want to have a real conversation, Let's man. just talk, bro. Don't make me go to social media to find out Listen, what's I going really on I really think you, you need to talk to your family. <laughs> or what, I don't know what relationship stuff is. <laughs> Do do you think you'd like to to get back out yes. and host host something? Oh, I thought you were talking about dating. No, <laughs> I'm thinking more about dating huh? and stacking money right now. <laughs> I did run a show, Chris Cubis and I. I'm I'm only friends with Chris's. I <laughs> I only run shows with Chris's. Um, Chris Hardwick, Chris Cubis, <laughs> right. Chris Dallas. <laughs> uh, we brought back the Sting, his old show, yeah. for like a f- a few months, but then the they stopped doing shows there completely. Uh, and that was kind of like weird because I'm like, I came back into town. I don't know anybody. I yeah. only have like 10 names in my Rolodex. So after a year, I know a lot more people. So yeah, yeah. maybe I'll start. It's not that I don't like running. I don't like being in charge. I'm a, I am a uh, right hand man kind of guy. Yeah. I need a, I, I think that's why my comedy career is not successful. <laughs> I need like a manager. I need like, <laughs> Like, I want to be the chef, but, like, the chef doesn't, the chef pre- pre- me- pre- blah, blah, prepares the meals, yeah. the diuretics, and, uh, <laughs> like, the chef isn't opening, like, I want somebody to get people into the tables, yeah. to open the door, mop the, clean the place up, get seats filled, and then I'll serve. Laughter. <laughs> well, after. Basically, the, I don't want to do any work. Yeah, I need a boss. I need a boss. Say, yeah. I'm not a boss. I need one. Yeah. Well, when we when we get finished recording, I'll, I'll throw some names that you may Man, or may I'm... not have heard that I think you know should know about you. Okay. But you will have it's to do the work. They're just they they aren't um, <laughs> they aren't anybody in the entertainment industry. <laughs> My neighbor Greg. <laughs> yeah. Would I mean, love your over. stuff. Would love your yeah. stuff. Yeah, he's got. They have tiki torch holders. For yeah. Him, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll do the. I don't mind working. I just don't know how to send the emails. I don't know how to... Uh, I don't want to know how. I want yeah. to drive the car. I don't care how it's made. I don't, That's a problem. I don't care about the gears going here and there. Give me a damn car. <laughs> Give me a Buick. Comedy Wham did not reach the, uh, you know, sky-high levels of success by not writing the emails. Yeah. You got to write the emails. <laughs> got to write these emails. <laughs> got to write these <laughs> handwritten letters when i started when i was like 17 doing comedy in at the omaha funny bone was like kind of the first club that took me under their wing and uh i worked in the kitchen whatever did all this stuff um i would have to do press we did press kits press Mm -hmm. packets back then and this is the thing that i can't really like these younger kids sorry i'm gonna jump all over the place on this one but they like the young 21 year olds creek in the cave vulcan crowd uh, it makes me feel so old, but I'm only like a few years yeah. apart. Because I'll be like, yeah, we didn't have 
we had like MySpace and Facebook was just starting to be like for everybody. We had to send, I had to make DVDs. Like I, I think I made 25. So I had to go spend money on CDRs, make your DVDRs, make burn DVDs of my set of like a 20 minute set, put them in a thing. I had to write like a resume, a piece of paper resume that's had all my credits, this, this and that put that in a manila envelope with the DVD, put some headshots in there, full-size headshots, put in a little note, maybe put in something silly, like something like a little goof to do it. And then I mailed it to like 25 comedy clubs and that's how you got booked. Yeah. And I think I got booked one. One of those worked out of like 25. But I remember Cap spinning is back Cap. and Cap loved you. They did, yeah. Yeah, Mar- <laughs> Mar- Margie uh, just accepted my friend request. Oh! On Instagram after well, Margie's not seven years. She's not involved with Cap anymore. But we were friends, so that means she unfollowed me at one point. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Well. Wow. Or just didn't accept my friend request Maybe. for. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, um, yeah, I'll go out there. See, that's the thing, too. It's like, it's so far away. It's, it's like probably a 15-minute drive from my house. I'm like, eh, I could just stay home. <laughs> I think I'm still, like, there's still some COVID quarantine, like, yeah. uh, things, there's still something that doesn't seem quite settled yet. Yeah. In your brain. In my brain or just in the world around yeah. where I'm, li- it just still doesn't seem, I guess that's the new normal, as yeah. they say. Yeah, I think so. Well, I want a new not normal. <laughs> I want a new not normal. <laughs> a replacement version of the normal. Um. <clears throat> No, I'll get out. I'll I'll probably buckle down. And this movie's coming out too. I'm trying. I got to rebuild a reel and like get a new stand up oh, yeah. tape. And so everything's from 2018, 2000. Thank God. Like this is the this is why I love being 153 now. <laughs> um, yeah, I I can use a video from seven years ago and I look the same. So it's like you do. It's I fine. was watching. I have uh, to change my hairstyle. County, and I'm like, okay, he does. He hasn't aged at all. My bangs are the only thing that change. <laughs> Yeah, because I played in this movie last August, I played a 19-year-old Jewish UT student. <laughs> and I was currently, at the time, I was 32. <laughs> so we'll see if this movie looks good. Yeah. It's called Home Free. <laughs> I think it just got finished with editing. Uh, that's cool. Is yeah, I was the lead. Movie? Yeah, and I'm serious. And I'm the straight man in it. What? Mm-hmm. Wow. I think I yell and I might cry. I don't oh. cry in it. I said I was not going to cry. Yeah. I only cry at commercials and Hallmark movies. <laughs> And everything. <laughs> I watched. I, I was. I cried at She Hulk, the second episode of She Hulk, or the first episode of She Hulk. I cried. It's sad though. <sighs> the Hulk's so lonely. Bruce Banner was so lonely. Yeah. His cousin was kind of being a dick. <laughs> All his friends are dead, saving the universe, and she's being a dick. It's fictional. Ryan, it's all no! fictional. It is. The tears weren't. The tears were real <laughs> as a hell. <laughs> I love watching. This is why I love um, my the podcast Men on Film, the one that's going to get me canceled. Uh, it started as like a quarantine podcast, and all we do is watch a movie and then just uh, talk about it, me yeah. and two friends. And basically, we always end up making fun of one of the hosts, uh. like specifically Adam. And, <laughs> but I haven't seen so many films. My ha- like growing up, my family didn't do music. They weren't. There's no like creative things oh, going wow. on in our household. The only three CDs we had were ACDCs, Back in Black, uh, CCR, which was great, and no, four. We had four. We had Alabama Christmas, and a Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> <laughs> Out of nowhere, a Weird Al Yankovic that's thing. That's so crazy. So that's what my mixtapes were. Those oh, four wow. combined. <laughs> it was bizarre. Just no create. So I had to figure out music, what music I liked on yeah. my own, everything. And so this Men on Film movie, I wa- I'm seeing all these old David Lynch movies that mm-hmm. I should have seen years ago. Um, and I get into, it doesn't matter what movie, I can get into, is that mm-hmm. empathy? When you're watching it, like I can understand, yeah. Yeah. ooh, and it's bad. You cry? Commercials, oh, every, I tear up. If I'm alone, I'll let it go, but I'll let it go. <laughs> <laughs> Some things. What was I just watching? Mo. Moe's a good one. Oh, on. we just started watching it? it. So, so good. good. So uh, good. A couple of a couple of Austin guys too. I'm waiting to see. Um, Grant come. Redmond. He's an improv him. guy. I'm, I've been meaning to DM him. He plays a character. Great oh. in it. Also, Mo is. 
Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's been around. I think I met him a couple of times. So good, though. It's a really well done show. Not I enough nudity. Rami. Not enough nudity. <laughs> so I never watched Rami. I don't know anything about oh, this guy. Oh, it's really good. It's that might be Hulu. next on my list because I just finished Mo. Yeah. I feel like Rami was like an intro to um, that culture. Yeah. And Mo is like taking it a step up, like really showing us. Well, it's a, the diverse too because he's. Oh, I love Most of it's yeah. like his real life. Like, yeah. He's been 25 years in yeah. the system trying to get green card or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely recommend. Check out Mo. Second it. season. Hopefully. Mo, if you're listening. Yeah. Come on. He was a guest on our. Come on up to Austin and uh, freaking let me get in there. Let me, uh, you know, you know, know me. I know, I know you got better friends out here, but let me uh, jump on them coattails. Let me uh, come in with the character. Hold on, I'll work with Grant. I'll work with Grant. <laughs> you can catch an episode of us with Mo. It uh, was podcast? actually, yeah, it was actually Richard who like has recorded like three interviews. He's so fun. He's just such a big personality. Yeah. Yeah, he was great. We got to see his uh, Netflix his Absolute special sweetheart, too. Yeah, yeah, you can tell. He f- I mean, he fucked my wife, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I don't blame her. <laughs> like, I don't blame her. It ruined our marriage, but... I think that was the third one. Yeah. Third marriage. Yeah, you're up to 14 now. Four. Four? Yeah. Four divorces. <laughs> About 14 deaths. <laughs> Widows. When you live this long... <laughs> Your wives are going to die on you. This long. You're 33? 153. Oh, yeah. 33 Sorry. for y'all. Yeah. But in about 50 <laughs> years, I'll probably have to move somewhere else and start over at 21. <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah, I'm just starting comedy. <laughs> <laughs> you could pull that off. That's what I'm doing. That's I'm like. You, you could say. Except. I'm, that bro- I'm the broke vampire. It's like, how are you broke, bro? You're uh, four centuries old. Like, put a penny in one bank account at one point and you're good. But groceries, being immortal would be taxing. You still got to poop, sleep, pee, <laughs> eat. You got to pay for groceries. You have yeah. to work. Immortally in debt. It sucks. It's exhausting. <laughs> Is there anything we haven't talked about that you want to talk about? I don't know. I don't think so. We We covered... Um, the Word of God, we covered mm-hmm. the Father, we covered the Son, we covered the Holy Spirit, <laughs> didn't get into the horny spirit. <laughs> that sucker will creep up on you. <laughs> no, I mean, just, I'm pretty much only on Instagram. I'm really enjoying, I feel like the second I kind of backed away from all that social media stuff, yeah. I know it's kind of a cliche, or like they, you know, scientists tell you that yeah. it's unhealthy to be on it so much. Um, they're right. Like I've, I've felt like I'm living a normal life. I go to work at an illegal bar. It's an <laughs> illegal speakeasy that I bartend at, um, literally. And uh, so I guess I'm living a crazy, weird life. Yeah. My sleep schedule is now like I work from like eight to eight p.m. to four a.m. Sometimes. So I'm coming home. I'm, I, I live with a 23 year old roommate. Um, so there's a 10 year gap difference. So I just feel old as shit. She's going to school. She's going to UT. Oh, my God. So uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll, like, be coming home at 5 in the morning while she's waking up to start <laughs> to start her day. And I'm like, oh, whatever. Wow. But, like, not be, I'm not on Instagram. People are getting mad that I don't respond fast enough. And I'm like, well, call me or something. Like, Yeah. <sighs> somebody, somebody call me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start calling you. Oh, please. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, Ryan, I have a, a, a little bit that I do during the podcast where I have an icebreaker question and then a mm-hmm. closing uh, question, and it's one word to describe your past and then one word to describe your future. Five years ago, your past word was dark and mysterious. So you went mm-hmm. with two words. I think Batman had just came, a new Batman had just came out, so it's <laughs> probably... <laughs> And your future word was infinite. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to revisit either of those? Dark and mysterious, I'll tell you 100%. I was really probably going down a, a Batman route. I actually specifically remember that weekend or whatever, the, th- the three days surrounding doing that podcast. I was <laughs> watching some animated Batman thing huh. that was on Netflix. Like that was wow. my travel show. Like I would watch before uh-huh. I'd pass out. 
So that's probably where I got that. And infinite, that's crazy because four days ago, five, whatever, a week ago, uh, whatever, like seven years ago, whatever, like <laughs> okay, a century ago. No, f- literally last week or this week, I don't know what time is right now, uh, I watched that Mark Wahlberg movie called Infinite. Oh. And it's wow. about it's about like um, he's a thousand years old. His body he keeps being reborn in uh-huh. a new body, so he has he's accessing all this knowledge. Uh, and I also watched the Batman <laughs> like not too long ago. I saw that I saw the newest the Batman twice in the theaters this the first day, wow. not because I liked it that much. Just two different groups of friends were like, we're going. <laughs> That's six hours of the Batman, oh, gosh. of Robert Pattinson's The Batman. It was good, though. I, I liked loved it. it. Yeah, and then I watched it again with my dad like a week later. <laughs> I put nine hours into <laughs> The Batman. Um, and he's definitely dark and mysterious. Yeah. Um, infinite, yeah, because that's the immortality thing. I would change my past, darken, it's pretty open. I'm like a white kid from Nebraska. <laughs> <It's> pretty, <laughs> so I'm pretty basic. So, uh, um, ride or probably back then I was probably more um, ride or die would be my password. Um, and now it's probably family would mm. be my future word, um, which are both the catchphrases from the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> Why would I think you'd be giving me a... I'm ride or die, and that's my yeah. family, and uh, ride or die, family, baby. <laughs> I once had a... I once had a... I don't know why that sounded like an Irish jig. I once had a man who walked on the... Um, and I don't know why I said I once. I have a uh, an autistic cousin. Oh, my God. Okay, so <laughs> I have... He's, he's got, like, schizophrenia and all this stuff, and he's, he's on pills, so he's, he, like, in the last five years kind of gained more gained some weight. He's probably mid-late 20s. Um, and him and I will drink whenever we're, like, we're, we'll hang out whenever that we're, whenever we're in town together. And so I, his mom gives me, my aunt-in-law gives me all his hand-me-downs that don't fit anymore. Like, she'll just be like, here's a bag of T-shirts, and I'll go through and pick, like, four of them. Uh-huh. And she handed me one... Last month or last month, I went back to Nebraska, and she handed me one, and it was like tennis tournament, Iowa State tennis tournament. Da da da. I was like, "Oh, this is cool." It was a cool white neon shirt. Um, I'm so I'm wearing it. Like the next day, I, I look in the mirror. It's for the it's for the Iowa Special Olympics. <laughs> so I was walking around all day with an Iowa Special Olympics <laughs> tennis, and I couldn't be like I couldn't be like. No, I was supporting my because it was like it's like I played in the I, yeah. <laughs> So can I wear that though? I don't Is that know. rude? I think it might be. I guess I'm gonna have to actually join the I'm Special gonna Olympics. <laughs> I'm gonna have to learn tennis, get into the Special Olympics. <laughs> um, uh. No, so one Christmas, like seven years ago, this is Fast and the Furious. When Fast Seven came out, that was the cr- movie. Every year, I gave my dad a new Fast and the Furious movie, and we watched it. This year, this cousin, my cousin was staying with us for like four days while I was also back home for Christmas. Fast 7 came out. I got it for my dad for Christmas. We start at Fast 7. We're watching that. Movie gets done. We're having the time. We're drinking rum and Cokes, the three of us, just having a guy's, a guy's day. We still got all night ahead of us. After Fast 7 ends, we, I go, y'all want to watch Fast 6? I go, y'all want to go backwards? We put Fast 6 on. We're getting drunk. You want to watch Fast Five? We watched three Fast and the Furious movies oh in one day, wow. starting at set, and then the next day we're like, we have to go all the way back to one. We spent three days just getting drunk watching Fast. It was the Funny. most relaxing three days of my life. Yeah. Ride or die, family. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. All right. Well, uh, Ryan, that is a wrap on Comedy Wham Presents Ryan County. Okay. Part two. Tell us where we can find you on social media and Instagram, promote. Facebook. I, I still have my Facebook, but it's just whatever I post on Instagram. Just, I don't get, I don't see Facebook post or notifications or anything. So whatever I post on Instagram gets over there. So I don't know if I'm blowing up on Facebook. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know, huh? And uh, but Instagram is at Ryan County. R Y. You can just look at Ryan County and that C O W N I E. Yeah. And I think you'll find me. That's about it. Instagram, 
why should we care check out that check out podcast instagram I, I promote all that stuff too um yeah what else itunes i can't die buy my album come on yeah buy my album y'all come on it's good is it i re-listened i mean it is sure it's good. <laughs> i've never listened to it <laughs> i lived it yeah you did i you should did. listen to it because i forget all those jokes well yeah i reminded you about one of them yeah yeah, and that one can take like six minutes. Yeah. Right? That's such a wait. My whole thing is, Matt Bearden once introduced me as, I've never seen anybody at Punch. He was like, I've, what did he say? He goes, this next comic, I've never seen anybody work so hard to get around writing a joke. <laughs> <laughs> to, to not have to do any work writing jokes. Highest compliment right like, there. Yeah, <laughs> shit, I am working. I'm doing that. I'm working too hard to not work. <laughs> We hope you've enjoyed learning about how Ryan got to be the comedic genius that you heard today in genius. his, in his uh, journey from I'm Nebraska not. to Austin to L.A. and back to Austin just as much as I have. This has been Comedy Wham Presents Ryan County. I almost want to say Ryan like you're in Yeah, I don't know why. That's on my Amazon Prime packages now. That, and all, that all started. That was my – I would play uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee on the GameCube in tournaments. You can only have four characters for your name. And I think I messed up and did Ryan instead of Ryan once. Uh-huh. And it just, that was it. it. I was Ryan. Yeah, now I got a music. I got <laughs> Fad and Ryan. You can check out that Bandcamp album. <laughs> it's my rap character and my kind of dance character. <laughs> uh, this has been Comedy Wham Presents Ryan County. I'm Valerie. And that's been funny. Thank you, Ryan. You did it. Thank you. This was fun. Yay. So that tiki torch, I can just grab that on the way. Out. <laughs>